good morning everybody and happy Friday and welcome to a new vlog. We are on our way to work and I'm already annoyed with people because, you know, we live in a world where everyone thinks that <clears throat> they're so special and they're really not, that they're exceptions to the rule and they're really not. And when they get called out on it, they like flip out. For example, I just went to Starbucks and there was this lady who couldn't park in the parking lot. She just had to pull up on the side because, you know, she's in a rush because, you know, no one else is on their fucking way to work and they're busy as well. It's just her. She's special. She's the only one. And then somebody came and saw what she did and kind of like, all right, sir, kind of blocked her in and she was like honking her horn and flipping out about it. And it's like, wait, bitch, isn't that the same thing that you just did? But you're mad that somebody else did it to you. And she's like flipping out and I'm, I'm laughing. And actually, so were the, the two older ladies in the car next to me. Cause it's like little dose of your own medicine and you can't take it. You're all mad. Like I'm in a rush. What do you think everybody else is doing? We're not all having our leisure. If you were having your leisurely time at Starbucks, you would have been sitting down at one of the cafe tables enjoying your coffee. So, no. Oh my gosh, I should have been recording now because it's been non-stop shit going on since I got on. Um, so normally I take a back road home to avoid paying the toll. And I saw there was a lot of traffic. So I was like, all right, let me just jump on the turnpike. And... As I was like on the ramp going on the turnpike, I like could look down and I saw there was like a girl laying in the street. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck's going on here? Now she was sort of like propped up on her arm. It almost looked like it was like, she was purposely like trying to stop traffic. I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll find out. I messaged my coworker, Jen, and I'm like, please find out what happened. And I'm sure she will. Then it was just, so before that, it was like at the gas station and this lady was like flipping out and honking her horn and like carrying on about this girl who parked her car to bring like, it's a gas station slash mechanic and she was like bringing in parts for them. I guess she was like delivering from somewhere. And this lady's just honking and flipping out. It's like, bitch, just back up and like you could go to the other, you know, the other side of the tanks. It's like, like, and she's like still, it's over with. The girl left already, she's still going on. And she's just like, you could have just backed up into the spot, had your gas, and probably been gone. And then it was just right now, like at the exit, like this guy's just like, well, let me just like jump into your easy pass lane. I'm like, sir, I'm already here. There's no, and then he's like honking at me, like, just like, you can't just decide you're going to like cut over four lanes and just go. And there was nobody on his side, so I don't see what the big deal was. But I'm like, dude, we already have adventures and like, nothing's even happened yet today um yeah so i don't know crazy times already crazy times so okay and this is the problem with coming home on a friday and not having anything to do after work so i've literally sat here and played on instagram and uh wasted my battery drained my battery to like 19 percent so now I have to get up just to charge my phone. Uh, time to get up. Okay, kind of got myself together a little bit, little bit here to start um, going over the two books that I read so far today. So the first one was Ma Barker and the Barker Carbis, the <laughs> the Ma Barker and the Barker Carpus Gang. The Controversial History of the Criminal Gang During the Great Depression. And this is by the Charles River Editors. I gave this three stars. It's obviously about Ma Barker, her sons, friends that they brought in along the way, people that she was with, her husband, and just kind of how she got her sons out of trouble. Some of the big deals that she made about stuff to get, like, let them get, like, get them out of trouble. Um just like facts along the way of how things went down and really how they like never pinpointed anything on her like that she really did get away with a lot of that which is pretty unusual I mean it even goes to like a time when she 
uh, at one point like when they rented a house and like all their neighbors love them and stuff so I don't know it was pretty interesting to hear about and this was like kind of like during that like public enemy number one type of situation well Great Depression era so that like I don't know I just thought it was pretty interesting it was a short book it came in at I think 58 pages and it fit the quest for a morally gray character which was study buddy and uh again I really enjoyed it it was short but like it definitely got to the facts and like I like that it really like focused yeah it told details and stuff but really it was just about like how she kind of like got away with stuff I read a book uh, a couple years ago that was kind of like this this was like uh mafia queens of Mumbai and it was I don't know there's something that I like in like the like I don't know underground type of criminal world where like you see the women who did stuff because so often it's like the other way around so or or the women are just like portrayed as like oh they were just like whores or prostitutes that just you know that was really their only role but I like in these where it's like you kind of see like they were really the masterminds behind it thinking about that I might actually like look up some other books and find more on that type of subject so okay and the second book I read was Lemonade and Love Potions by Bella Falls this is the Southern Charms Cozy Mystery one and a half I believe this was 52 pages I'm not gonna rate this book because it was clear that I didn't know what was going on like you had to have read the first book first so I'm not gonna give it a star rating but I'm quickly going to read this uh, like what this book's about and it says magic and mystery are only part of the southern charms of honeysuckle hollow Charlie Goodwin can't help herself when it comes to helping out her friends especially a failed cupid trying to earn his way back into the matchmaking ranks a singles mingle in her small southern supernatural town should have been the perfect event, but trouble with a capital T shows up when someone attempts to boost the odds of love in their favor. Sweet honeysuckle iced tea, it's going to take more than lemonade and a little magic to help Charlie find out what's wrong, solve the mystery, and save Honeysuckle Hollow from disaster again. So again, this really like played on you already knowing the characters and like some of what was going on which I didn't know so I read this one because this was a cozy mystery this was a short book and it also um the characters so for one of the quests I read this one for potion testing book with potions and poison so that's what I have done so far for the rest of the weekend I plan on getting one two two more books uh, three more books done because i plan on reading two for the quests and i also three for the quest i no two for the quest and this one killer kung pao which is going to be for the last book i need to read for berna's bookish bingo so i will get that one done and i'll let you know when i'm finished with that one hello everyone um just quick update on a book I finished reading which was Reckless Reprint by Isabella Bassett. This is number four, first book I've read in the series. This is number four in the out of print bookstore series. I've also seen it called the o old bookstore cozy mystery. Anyway, I read this because it was a short book that had, it was a short book it was a cozy mystery with a two-word title so that covered the um scavenger hunt pick for two-word title that also was a book with r in the title i needed that for the killing time with cozy's abc challenge and it also had a b in the author's name which i needed for the quest for magical readathon so um it covered those things but other than that i gave this a one star i thought for a 98 page book there was way too much description like this lady was writing like she's George R. R. Martin and this is Game of Thrones so way too much description I understand this takes place in in Switzerland it's at a castle but she just really overly described things for 98 pages 
and maybe I needed to read the other books first but I wasn't doing that like I was just trying to hit these challenges um, so her husband takes her to Switzerland. They go to this castle. The, the, uh, it was two brothers that owned the castle. One died in the forest mysteriously. So the other brother who was the chef is now running it. And of course it's a cozy mystery. So somebody winds up dead and she, um, kidding, Anne, she winds up, um, she was the, the main character. She winds up, of course, sleuthing it out. And there's like a book about dragons and dragon bones. And I'm like, where are we going with this? So I don't know. I felt like there was a lot in it for 98 pages and like too much description for me. Just not for me. Other people seem to love it that I looked up on Goodreads. Again, maybe I needed to read the first three. I didn't. I'm not going to. I just, you know, was using this to check off, you know, a couple boxes. So anyway. That is it and um, I'm gonna get back right now I think for right now I'm gonna get back to uh, Killer Kung Pao so hey everyone it is Tuesday morning I'm on my way to work so I just wanted to hop on real quick and let you know about the book I finished yesterday this was Twist of Fate by Kathy Daly this is number 10 in the Gooseberry Bay series um, I really enjoyed this one uh, the plot is a bit of a minor spoiler, so if you absolutely don't want to know what's going on, I would kind of pass over this part because I feel like I, I want to talk about it. So, in this one, Ainsley is hired to, she's hired by this woman who said she gave birth and for some reason she wasn't conscious when the birth happened and her husband was kind of they said the baby was sick and her husband was kind of coerced into giving up rights to the baby to someone who could better take care of the baby. And um, her husband, the woman's husband, had confessed this to a priest. Now the husband is dead, or he just died, and the priest wound up con like telling this to the woman. So the woman wants to hire Ainsley. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to say this part. That the the... Oh yeah, because she was told that her she was told that her daughter was dead. So when the husband tells her this, now she wants to hire uh, Ainsley to find her daughter. So at the same time that this is going on, she so then Ainsley kind of is kind of hesitant about taking the case, but then her sister, who she's been reunited with, and she finds out we have previously found out her sister's like a super spy. Um, she tell she comes to town and tells Ainsley like no I want you to take the case because on the other side of it there's a whole nother story that part I won't give away because that's like the plot of the book so um yeah I thought this one was really good because it was kind of like you teamed up you got both sides of a case this time and you got the sisters together so I really enjoyed this one I gave it four stars and it, I liked the concept in this one it was pretty good Today, Peanut Butter Panic comes out, which is the next book in the Amish Candy Shop Mystery by Amanda Flower. So this is like super anticipated book in the cozy mystery slash Amish reading world. And it is Amish in August right now, so there's a benefit to that. However, I am supposed to be, or I am buddy reading, I'm supposed to be buddy reading a book called Vessel. All right, I am buddy reading a book called Vessel with my buddy reading partner, Sharon. So I am supposed to get um, halfway through that by Thursday. Confident I can do that and start on Peanut Butter Panic, but we'll see where that goes. That Oh, and then I also have to edit Marcus's uh, last the current book he's working on so I told him I would have that done by the latest Thursday but I'm confident I can get it done between today and tomorrow uh, which I want to do because I am meeting up with an old friend on Thursday for dinner so I know I really won't have time that day to get it done so our company decided to do a barbecue lunch on Wednesday for a couple hours so the managers were nice enough to grill up some food and some salads, burgers and dogs and chicken. And then they rented this dunk tank 
So two of the owners and the warehouse manager were dunked, which, you know, a lot of the employees enjoyed doing. And then Jennifer wanted to get dunked as well. So she brought clothes and I will put in some footage that she took as well. Come on, Mia. you for sure. He was under the water, so he didn't hear me. Do you think the boss will let me do it? I brought extra clothes. Guys, this is on my bucket list. So hopefully he says yes. Hopefully he says yes. Yes, this is on my bucket list. I'm praying to God he says yes. I brought extra clothes.
happy Thursday night, everyone. It is 11 o'clock. I'm tired. I just went out with one of my high school best friends. She came up to Jersey for the weekend with one of her sisters. So we went to dinner and then we got a couple drinks at a bar and now I'm home. So uh, that was my night tonight. I would have probably already posted some clips from yesterday from the barbecue we had at work with the dunk tank, which was a lot of fun. And yeah, that's where I'm at as far as life. Uh, um, for books, I have an hour and 12 minutes left in Peanut Butter Panic, which is, I believe, number 10 in the Amish Candy Shop series by Amanda Flower. Um, I will not get that done until tomorrow because I just want to chill out right now. And um, yeah, I'll get to that tomorrow. Editing this entire vlog is going to be tomorrow, so just don't have the bandwidth to do it right now. So that is that. I'm pretty happy with my reading so far this month. I'm not even going to go over anything right now. Whatever I read this week, I read. So that's it. I'm just going to wrap up here. I'm super tired, so I'm just going to say thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. It's nighttime for me, and I will see you next time. Of course, this asshole wants to make the fucking left. This is not, this is not legal, but I'm doing it right now anyway. Why is everybody making a fucking left-hand turn? Yeah, sir, I'm following you because this is fucking bullshit. Every fucking... I'm following this guy because literally every fucking line is making a left turn. Come on, bro. Don't disappoint me. Now you're just going to be fucking slow and annoying. Got it. Um, it's just... It's not going to do that. People are making a big deal about nothing. No, it really is fucking big deal. You can't even fucking get out of a parking lot over here. This is just fucking ridiculous. I'm just ready to get home and eat my food. Fuck me, I forgot to go to fucking Starbucks, motherfucker. Now I gotta go all the way back over there. Fuck, fuck, fuck.